In this video, I'm going to ex explain what conductors are, what metals are, and why metals are conductors. So, the most common and cheap conductor we have that works the best is copper. I move these precious metals out of the way. That, of course, is silver and gold. Um, and in order to stand, understand why copper is a good conductor, we have to look at um, its atomic structure. So, periodic table tells us copper is number 29. Uh, the number on the periodic table tells you two things. The number of protons in an atom and the number of electrons. The protons are inside the nucleus of, of this atom. Um, but in electronics, protons are not that important. That's more of nuclear reactions. Um, splitting out of the stuff. So uh, we're focused on the electrons. So 29 electrons, where do they go? Well, they go in rings around the atoms. Um, and so there's a bunch of rings. The first ring that goes around, um, or you could call it the first uh, shell, just has two electrons. And they're really pretty close to the copper nucleus, and so they're held in very tightly. They're not going anywhere. But now we have another ring. It's still pretty close. It's a little bit farther out. There's some more electrons. Um, eight on this guy. Okay. So we're up to 10. We still have a lot more to put in, so okay, here we go. Another ring. It's a little farther out. And this one has 18 electrons. Oh boy, they may not be equally spaced, but here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, <laughs> thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, that worked out all right. Um, so we have, once again, 2, 10, 28. Um, hey, just one more. All right, let's make another ring. Now this ring is pretty far out from the nucleus. So this little lone guy out here uh, can't be held in very tightly. Um, by the positive force of all these protons. And so he's kind of free floating around here. And say we have another copper over here. I'm not gonna redraw, of course, that entire molecule, but I am I am gonna put a just the outer ring. You know, there's some other rings and stuff going on inside, just like that. And there's another electron, like like I said, very weakly held in by the copper nucleus um, because it's so far away, just like when you have two magnets, the farther you pull them away, the less force there is, it, kind of the same idea there. Um, but in your metal, you know, in a chunk of copper, you have copper atoms surrounded by thousands and millions of other copper atoms in very close proximity to each other. And sometimes these electrons will get so close they just whoosh, right like that, jump over um, to this guy. And whoa, now we have two electrons on this one. Um, that's not good. There's not room for both, so, um, and it makes the charge uh, unequal. So this guy, this guy's gonna go find another copper atom, so, I'm gonna push that <laughs> coin out of the way and we're gonna put another copper atom up here because like I said, a chunk of copper, you're surrounded with copper atoms all over the place. Here's another copper atom. And he's got his one lonely electron and but this guy jumps over here um, to distribute the effect of this guy jumping over here. Oh man, this guy has to jump somewhere else. So you can see, that as soon as one electron um, makes this little jump, um, it kind of cascades and now pretty much every electron in that chunk of copper is moving around. 
And this is actually happening right now inside this copper coin. Um, just millions of times per second. There's electrons flowing inside this copper coin. But why is it not generating electricity or shocking me? I mean, obviously it'd be ridiculous because it's not a battery, but uh, why, why? Um, it's because they're all kind of moving in circles. There's no real direction of things. You know, as soon as one of them starts moving um, kind of upwards, there's another one somewhere else in the piece of metal moving downwards. And so there's no net flow of electrons. They're just counterbalancing each other all the time at random. However, um, let's say for example, that we place near this piece of copper something that creates a positive charge. Um, so remember, we have all these electrons, they're all negatively charged, held in mm, kind of loosely uh, to these positive copper nucleuses um, by the protons inside. Um, but now we place a positive charge near this piece of metal and suddenly these electrons have a goal in life um, and they have something more attractive to go to than the nucleuses and so they all rush over to all of them this guy goes down here this guy goes down here this guy goes down here all of the electrons get as close as they can to the positive uh, source the positive charge um, so for an instant you have electric current you have electrons flowing all in one direction um, all together but it only lasts an instant because before you know it all the electrons have stopped moving they've reached their destination they're as close as they can be to the positive charge so um, in order for this circuit to keep moving, we would have to somewhere else have a source of electrons, um, a negative charge. It doesn't have to be on the opposite side, anywhere else. Um, that's, that's gonna be replacing these electrons as they get kind of sucked um, and attracted over to the positive charge. And now we actually have a circuit. We have electrons coming in, bouncing around between millions and millions and millions of copper atoms, and finally reaching the destination at the positive charge and potentially flowing through the rest of the circuit. Okay, so we know copper is a good conductor, but why might silver be a better conductor? Well, looking at the periodic table, we can see that um, silver is, well, it's right below copper, um, number 47. Now, I'm not gonna draw 47 electrons uh, because I know what this looks like. It actually looks the same, except it has one more ring around it with another lone electron which that means that that electron is even further away from this positive nucleus and even more willing to jump around with less energy. And so you may have a million electrons jumping around inside this and you may have 10 million electrons jumping around in this. I mean, I'm just coming up with arbitrary numbers. Um, what I'm saying is electrons more easily uh, detach from their original copper nucleus and jump on to another one and they do it more frequently uh, because they're farther away and there's less attractive um, less attractive force uh, so that's why silver is a even better conductor than um, copper now, we have a lot of metals, and most of them are conductive. Um, 
and not all of them are going to work as well as copper because you know they might have two or three electrons or something um, and so it's a little bit more complicated for them to be jumping around and also they, they may not have the same number of rows as copper so copper is one of those ones that has kind of an ideal configuration um, and we know from um, uh, chemistry that atoms want to be stable and in order to be stable they want to have no free floating electrons on their outer ring. They just want to have a complete ring. So for example, I mean this is not copper anymore, or it could be a ion, but say for one that has two more electrons, I guess that would be gallium perhaps, um, it's gonna want to get rid of all three of these electrons in this kind of electron C. It's, um, instead of just one. So that's a reason why gallium might be a weaker conductor. It has three to get rid of, not just one. Uh, and of course, if you were to take something completely not conductive, um, like sodium, um, real quick, Sodium nucleus, it, yeah, don't imagine that it's not right up next to a copper. This is our copper block. This is sodium somewhere else. Uh, it's got 11 electrons, so I'm gonna have to draw small here, but here's one, two, second ring has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then it also, so our 11th electron is out here, also has this lone valence electron. Um, kind of like copper, except it is much closer in um, and therefore held more tightly. Uh, and if you have a chunk of sodium, um, you're not going to see these electrons just kind of floating around between sodium atoms like you do in copper and some of the other metals. Uh, so I hope that helps explain why um, metals are good conductors, especially copper or uh, silver on the atomic level. It's all it has to do with electron flow and the positive-negative attractive forces.